Okay, hi, welcome to the Geneva all member meeting, the 21st instance of that meeting. Uh, We're very grateful to have you all here today. My name is Steve Crum. I'm the founding executive director of the Geneva Alliance. And it's my pleasure to be the MC for the remainder of today and, and a portion of tomorrow. Uh, we have a great program set for you all today. And uh, it's going to kick off with a, a very important keynote um, on the value of standardized uh, vehicle data for connected vehicles. Um, we're very, very pleased to have Christoph, Christoph Ludwig from uh, Geotab. Uh, he's the vice president of OEM Europe uh, for Geotab. He has also uh, recently joined, been elected to the Geneva Board of Directors. And so we're very, very pleased to have him uh, in Geneva and on the board influencing the future of the organization. And we look forward to learning from him and his experience uh, in the OEM arena in, in Europe and, and beyond. So with that, I'm gonna uh, introduce uh, Christoph and ask him to uh, go ahead and take over with the keynote today. Thank you, Christoph. Thank you, Steve. Thanks for having me here and uh, welcome to everybody on the screens. Um, I would have loved, of course, to meet you in person and give this keynote live to you. Um, as we all know, that is not possible. So I'm more than happy to at least have the opportunity to do it via this means. Um, what I'm going to talk about today is about standardization and connected vehicle data. But first of all, um, let me give you a small overview on uh, what I do and what GeoTab is doing, because this will put the rest of my presentation into a context um, where I come from and why GeoTab has such an interest in working with data and uh, is keen on standardized data. GeoTab is a, a company in its heart, an engineering company working with fleet management solutions and IoT and relying on vehicle data to provide these services originally to the fleet managers to optimize their fleets and uh, the operations of the fleets. Uh, but in, in recent years, GeoTab has also involved in working with the data and uh, providing insights out of uh, the data it has available. The company is roughly 20 years old, um, 1,600 employees, um, about 100, 150 of those are actually data engineers and data analysts that work with the available data um, worldwide presence. And uh, we count uh, many, many of Fortune 500 companies to our customers. Um, we have been involved in Genie for quite a long time um, because it is really important for us to have access to vehicle data and standards are by far the best means to have a wide access. And so I'm very happy also to be able to uh, work with Genevi as an elected board member, um, because this gives us the opportunity to bring in the knowledge we've built up over the last years into the whole ecosystem. And one major philosophy of Geo GeoTab is that the customer should have the choice, the choice on what he wants to do, what products he wants to use, and uh, what he wants to happen with his data and standardization makes this a lot easier as well. Now, um, to give you some, some figures, uh, GeoTab has roughly 2 million vehicles connected. Actually, it's 2.3 million already. It's growing by thousands, month by month. And uh, we collect about 40 billion data points each day. So you can see that we are really a data-driven company and we have uh, what's usually called a large data lake available, uh, which we can make use of and really um, derive a lot of insights and information out of this data for the benefit of our customers. And the larger this lake gets, the better it is, the more insights we can get out of this. And that's why GeoTab is always interested to make data available and then work with the data um, as far as possible. And now you've seen in my, in my job title that I'm responsible for the OEM relations on, on GeoTab's side. 
Um, what does it mean? And here I can uh, close the gap to um, the OEM side and then the vehicle side. The basic technology model, how Geotab gets access to the data for the customers, you can see on the lower part of this slide. Um, usually we install a device, so-called Go device into the OBD part of the vehicle. This uh, device collects data from the vehicle, sends it to the Geotab cloud, um, where it is then stored and uh, processed. You all know that the vehicles, and now I come to the upper part of that slide, the vehicles are connected more and more. They have uh, typically factory installed telematics units um, in, in the vehicle, which can do basically the same thing, collect the data, transmit the data. Um, and the OEM factory fitted devices transfer this data to the um, to the OEM cloud where it is stored and processed again. Now, what we have done in recent years is working with uh, several OEMs and trying, and not only trying, but doing so, getting the data from the OEM cloud into the Geotab cloud, harmonize it, normalize it, and put it together with the own generated data from the Geotab devices and present this data to the customer, to the fleet customer in portals and SDKs and then on the marketplace. So the interesting thing here is that we can then gather the data from the vehicles without ever touching the data, without touching the vehicle, without installing a de device and uh, by making it possible to use the factory installed TCU for the customer alongside the vehicles that have the Geotab um, OPD device installed. Now, this leads to the question, why is standardization helpful and why is it needed? It is a complex world and I, I want to explain to you what I mean with that. But before I do so, I have an example here to show what is actually happening outside. Um, this is a real life example where a city wanted to monitor the traffic on a, on a special um, uh, street. And it did so by installing um, the pneumatic tubes and uh, these counted the number of vehicles that passed across the street. Now, when we saw this, uh, we said, well, that's actually not the way you should do it in 2021. Um, you have all the data available and we could basically draw a virtual fence over the street and count all the vehicles that pass through this fence without going out outside the office, without installing anything on the street, but just having the data available and making it available, in this case, for the city who wants to monitor the traffic. Um, now, this gets even more powerful when you use not only a few vehicles, but all vehicles that, that are on the street. And that's where you need the data from all vehicles in the same format for to do so. So this is just a, an example where we could easily replace the picture on the left side with a virtual one on the right side. But the difficulty is that you have a lot of difficult, different vehicles, you have different makes, you have different models, even within model years of uh, vehicles, you have different data set, different protocols in the vehicle, and you have some special vehicles that have additional information like the spreader and the reefer and the plow and so on. So there is no uniform and no common data set um, again, over models, even model years, uh, which makes it difficult to really get harmonized data. Secondly, the data access currently is via the OBD port, which is originally intended as a diagnostic interface and not as a telematics interface. And even some of the newer EVs um, don't even have the OBD port as it was not laid out for electric vehicles. So the question is, how do we get 
data from those models that don't have an OBD port. Furthermore, um, what we need to do is um, for every new vehicle, every model, every model year, we have to do some reverse engineering. Uh, listening to the data on the OBD port, trying to interpret the data, trying to find out what is really meant with the data and how can we ingest it in the system. And lastly, uh, you all know the OBD is also question to um, uh, authentication, certification measures in the future. So that would make it even more complex to access the data. Third point, um, when, when just looking at the vehicles, um, is the vehicle to vehicle communication. Um, I know there are some activities ongoing, but it's becoming more and more important that vehicles talk to each other to uh, yeah, tell them about accidents, about traffic information, and especially for autonomous driving, it will be relevant that vehicles communicate directly um, and not via clouds um, due to timing reason. So here you will, or we will have to find a way on how to implement the same language across vehicles and brands and models anyway. So this alone is a complex world, all the different vehicles and then attributes in the vehicles. But if we take a look at where the data is going from the vehicles, you can see here, as, it, as explained before, some data goes to the OEM clouds and you have a lot different OEM clouds. Some of the data goes to telematic service providers as GeoTip is one, but there are many others. So again, many different clouds. And as I said uh, earlier, there's also a connection between the various OEM clouds and the GeoTap or other telematic service providers. So again, here you have a lot of different interactions, a lot of different APIs, a lot of different communication stream, streams for the data, uh, which makes it complex again. And from there on, the data is still not yet where it should be at the end consumer side. Now you have uh, the users of the data, are fleet owners, are charging providers, leasing companies, insurances, and so on and so forth. So many different organizations that need the data to do their business. And you oftentimes have a neutral service in between there. You probably know the concept of the neutral server, which is intended to be this kind of a harmonization and normalization stage between the OEM clouds and the end consumers. But this again adds some more complexity due to even more uh, APIs and interactions you have between the systems. Um, now you can see um, easily that this is really a complex world, which I meant at the beginning. Um, and it looks more or less like, like spaghetti. Um, you have different vehicles, you have different OEMs and telematic service providers, and that multiplied with different data users is a lot, a lot of APIs, a lot of interactions, a lot of data streams that have to be managed. And this leads to the conclusion that we really live in a fragmented world, we have fragmented business models, we have multiple data streams that are available. And we have, of course, multiple costs for the API integration um, because um, every party has to work on an integration, has to work on the API. And oftentimes on the far right side, you have the companies that don't have IT necessarily as their core competency, they have other business models. So I oftentimes see that these companies would like to use the data, but they shrink away from doing all the integration effort because it's not just one integration, it's integration to all of the, all of the providers to the uh, clouds that are available. So in the end, we are not really creating value with data here, but we are creating complexity with the numerous integrations uh, that have to be done. So the question then, of course, is um, what could we do against this? And um, obviously, the answer is in standardization. Um, and I've pointed out here five 
uh, target areas where standardization from my point of view could help to reduce the complexity. First of all, you have the in-vehicle access so that uh, we could strive to have a somehow common interface in the vehicle where third, third party providers um, can get access to the data within the vehicle. Secondly, it's a vehicle to vehicle communication. As, as mentioned before, um, vehicles in future need to talk to each other um, to enable the autonomous driving, to avoid accidents, to manage the traffic situation. Thirdly, um, it's a vehicle to cloud communication. So if there was an, a unified standard, a unified interface that anybody would use would make integration effort much easier. Same counts for the cloud to cloud integration between the different um, telematic providers or data collectors. And lastly, it's the cloud to consumer interface. So how do all the users for the data how can they connect to the, to the clouds to get access to the data and to really work with the data? Um, if all of this can be managed and realized, what will be the benefit um, that, that can be achieved by using standardization and, and, how, and what's the value that can be created by doing so? I think it's, it's quite obvious um, that standardization can help in all parts of the value chain. Um, of course, it would allow an aggregated insight over multiple vehicle and fleets. So avoiding what I mentioned in the beginning, different vehicles, different models, different model years, having different set of data and different protocols and different kind of communication between the clouds. Um, so there would be would enable a really a truly fleet-wide similar data set um, that could help fleet managers to better manage their fleets. Of course, this was, would also allow to have a single source of data and a single source of truths of the data so that you can really rely on the data and have the data in similar formats and similar depth and richness um, so that you don't have to um, recalculate data um, and so on, but know what, what is available from the OEMs and it's similar over all OEMs and reverse engineering would not be required anymore. Um, security is always an issue um, in, in access to data, privacy and security, um, and the standardization could here also help to define a way how to access data and if this way it's a common way if it is accepted and implemented by all parties of course the security aspect has to be taken into account but it can be designed in a way that really all parties accept it um, and that is made a secure and safe access for everybody um, and not very very different kinds of accessing the data which potentially could open any uh, security window here. Um, accidents avoidance, I mentioned before, um, if vehicles stalk each other, that would be a value in itself. And um, decision-making based on a broader set of data is quite obvious as well. The more data is available and if it is comparable, you have more data that can be used for road design, can be used for identifying dangerous areas where a lot of accidents happen, can be used for pothole detection, uh, parking information can be available, can be made available. Also management of uh, the power grid, um, because you know when, when the electronic vehicles will charge and what amount, and you can better steer the availability of the power grid and balance the electrical loads. And these are just a few examples, but data, is used to make decisions. And the more data you have, the better decisions you can make. And lastly, um, which is the most important point for me, is the value adding development, product development, not spending so much time and resources 
in developing different APIs and developing integrations to various systems. But if you have a standard, you can integrate once and put all your effort, energy, and resources in developing new products, value-added products that customers will love and need and are willing to pay for. Um, so that can be a real, real benefit for the ecosystem here. And um, here I bring just a, a small example. We don't have to look so far away. We can have a look at what has happened on the, on the truck side as an example. And I'm pretty sure many of you are aware of this. Um, almost 20 years ago, and that's a long time in, in the connectivity and in data time, um, the major truck manufacturers agreed to provide roughly 20 data points available in the truck, in the standard interface in the truck, um, so that anybody could put their device on this uh, canvas interface, the J1939 interface, and get access to the most relevant data points from the truck that can be used and were used for telematic purposes. That was a standard, it was secure, but very important, it was accepted by everybody. It was across brands, and yes, I'm aware that not all manufacturers implemented it 100% in the same way. There was slight difference, but in general, it was and could be used across brands. And I'm, I'm convinced that this actually helped to make telematics in the truck fleets more popular than before and helped the growth of fleet telematics for trucks because um, it was basically truck independent and it helped the aftermarket and helped competition to provide the right products. Not long after that in 2009, the same companies decided uh, that they should uh, put the FMS standard on an API interface, the remote FMS standard uh, was introduced. Same logic, same idea. There is an API available that's clearly defined as a standard API. Anybody can uh, integrate with that API and get access to the data. Of course, the customers have to uh, accept that the data is being shared, but that's uh, under the umbrella of data privacy, given any way that the customer has to decide what happens to his data. So there are examples available how this was handled and managed in, in other areas. Um, I am also aware of um, that there is always some, some barriers that have to be overcome. Um, and first one is the reaction of an OEM, of a telematic service provider, any other partner is saying, okay, if everything is standardized, how will I be able to differentiate myself from the competition? Um, here, my answer is standardization doesn't mean there is no competition. Standardization means you don't have to differentiate in the basic infrastructure. You have to differentiate in the products you're offering and in the value you're providing to the customers. And um, here you can really focus on the data and, and what value you make out of data because data is one of the few goods that really gets more valuable when, when you share it. Um, so it doesn't mean that your product have to, has to be standard, but the underlying infrastructure should be a standard. Uh, next one oftentimes I hear is, uh, why should I contribute knowledge? Um, I have the knowledge, I know what to do. Uh, why should and other people have a benefit of that, of that? And here, obviously, it's a give and take. Um, I believe that when everybody works together and collaboration is the key, that the knowledge of everybody brought together is worth more than just the individual knowledge one party has. So if you give your knowledge, give it into the group, help to work, then you will take out something that's more worth than you had before because you also can make use of the knowledge of the whole group that work with you. Um, next one, also very common, we have invested a lot of money, a lot of time in our current system in, our, in integrating the interfaces and building up the system. Um, but here the answer is, your system probably will be revamped any five to years, five to seven years anyway. Um, so next time you do a, an overhaul of your system, 
try to implement the standards that has been made available until then. Um, it doesn't mean that we have to do it immediately and throw away everything you have, but next time you, you evolve your system, um, make use of the standards. And this leads to the fourth point. Um, oftentimes people say, ah, standardization takes too long. Uh, market is, is faster than standards and we can't wait for that. And here I would say then it's, especially then it's time to start now and not wait any longer on working on the standards. But the longer we wait, the more complicated and the more complex it's get, it gets. Um, here, another uh, short case study and, and the benefits um, that standardization could bring. Um, this is from the point of view where, um, as explained before, where we can, where a telematic service provider can make use of the direct data access of the OEMs and avoid installing an aftermarket device to a car. Obviously, the benefit for the customer is to avoid double payment. So the customer has paid for the car with the telematics control unit installed X factory already. So there's no need to pay for another aftermarket device to install in the car. And of course, also to avoid cost and time for installation and removal of that aftermarket device um, once the car is returned. Uh, on the side of the telematics service provider, the benefit is um, without ever touching the car, just with a push of a virtual button, the car sends data, which can be integrated into the customer system. There is no need for logistics and stock management of the um, hardware and obviously less warranty and less support for the hardware issues um, is needed. Uh, but also the OEM provides um, this kind of, of uh, relationship and business model because the OEM built in a telematics device in a car. And if a retrofitment device is used and not the built-in connectivity, it's a waste of money and resources. So the OEM is happy that the built-in connectivity is used in that car and not another one. And for sure also there are some revenue streams for the OEM by providing um, the interfaces to the OEM cloud and making the data available. And again, um, just to, to make sure, this is of course all under the privacy aspects that the customer has to, to decide if he wants to make the da data available or not. Um, Coming to the end, a short summary. Um, I strongly believe the way we do it currently is wasting resource, time, and money. So everybody is working on hardware devices, on integrations, on APIs. Um, that just doesn't make a lot of sense uh, to do this in multiple ways. Um, and you have different data sets, different integrations, different sources. It's not only you have to integrate the data from different sources, you also have to normalize and harmonize the data um, to make it available across makes, model, and then brands, which is an effort which can be avoided. And the, the standardization uh, would then deliver a decrease in cost and time, uh, which means an increase in efficiency, which is a value itself. And I strongly believe that this would lead to more revenues by scaling, along the cost reduction would lead to scaling. But if, as mentioned before, if we are all able to put our energy and creativity in developing new products and not integrating different APIs, then we would be able to add value for the customer, which um, the customer is then um, willing to, to pay additional revenues um, for. So this, this would increase value as well of the whole ecosystem. To give you one last example, uh, what, we, what we can do, here you see um, data from the uh, geotap devices based on accelerometer, meaning shaking of that uh, device. And um, this was uh, recorded retrograde uh, three years ago, um, roughly um, during the earthquake in Mexico. And you can see um, that the information we got clearly shows where the devices were shaken, meaning where the uh, center of the earthquake was and how um, you see the peak, how heavy it was. So this has nothing to do with fleet management. Uh, this is just an example to see the more data is available. It can be used, as we say, for the greater good. It can be used for making life easier, for being in this case, 
being able to react very fast to detect earthquakes, but this is just one of many, many examples what can be done to help uh, with data in, for, the, for the public. Okay, now um, coming to the, to the final, to the end, um, what's the takeaway? I strongly believe standardization drives the market and if all parties, and I mean really all parties, make use of the joint expert knowledge, uh, we can all together do something really great, something fantastic that helps to reduce costs, free resources for new innovations, and in the end, to make the customer happy. And that's all based on, on the standardization. And um, I can really urge you to start with this today and work on standardization as it really is an enabler for the, for the market we are all in. So thank you very much.